Hey friends, today we are on the beautiful BYU-Idaho campus and I have two missions. The number one mission, most important is, can I get voted most popular person on campus? Second mission is we are going to discuss the scriptures and come follow me and the guy who would have been voted most gritty in the high school yearbook. So let's dive in. Hey guys, I have finally convinced someone to stop and talk to me. What is your name? My name is Kylie. Everyone be nice and in the comments tell Kylie how great she is for doing this. Okay, so Kylie, event number one is that while Alma is on his way between missionary visits, he runs into his old friends, the sons of Mosiah, who'd been on a mission to the Lamanites for the past 14 years. Do you know what you're gonna do? I think so. Okay. Go on. I mean, we need to pause right now and read our scripture of the day. Do you have the scriptures with you? And there one to do you have a phone? I do. Go run. Okay. Get it. Get it. Okay. We are going to be in Alma 17 verse 1. So everybody pause and turn to Alma 17 verse 1 and Kylie is getting there right now. And now it came to pass that as Alma was journeying from the land of Gideon southward away to the land of Manti, behold, to his astonishment, he met with the sons of Mosiah journeying towards the land of Zarahemla. Okay, perfect. So now you drew just like a couple guys here, but I'm going to ask Kylie to actually add to that because in the storyline, it just mentions the sons of Mosiah and Alma, but the sons of Mosiah are actually on a mission right now because do you remember the anti-Nephi Lehi's, like the Lamanites that turn good Mm -hmm. and they put down their weapons of war and they won't fight? That's who's with them. They're trying to come back and see, can we get these anti-Nephi Lehi's protected so that the Lamanites Nights won't kill him. Do you remember those yeah, story? Okay, you remember that? Okay, so just draw some anti Nephi Lehi's. Not too hard, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, awesome. So we've got the anti Nephi Lehi's with the Sons of Mosiah meeting up with Alma. Now we are going to do like a dream sequence. How would you draw a dream sequence? Because we're going back in time 14 years. <laughs> I don't know what the setting is. So okay, so they're going back. I'll read it to you. Okay. So they're going back 14 years, and it's when the sons of Mosiah, they left for their missions. So they reach the borders of the Lamanites' land, and Ammon's giving them blessings, and the brothers separate for their missions. Third, Lamanite guards caught Ammon as he entered the land of Ishmael, and they brought him before King Lamoni. And the king was so impressed with Ammon that he offered him one of his daughters as a wife. But Ammon refused and instead offered to be the king's servant. Shannon, can you give us a timer? How much time does she have left? Three minutes, girl. You got to go faster. Okay. Key event number four. Ammon began working with the Lamanite servants who watched the king's flocks. And just three days into his service, Ammon and the other servants took the flocks to an area called the Water of Sebus to get water for their flocks. But they were attacked by bandits and Ammon killed or chopped off the arms of the attackers. Event number five. Still going. The servants returned to the king and they were carrying the arms of all the men who tried to steal the king's flock. And the king and the servants were so impressed by Ammon that they thought he must be more than a man. Now Ammon was finishing up his day's work and then he came to the king. Okay. How much time do we have, Shannon? No, we need, we need pressure. How much time? She's two minutes. She needs to work on a deadline or she's going to go so slow. Okay. (laughs) All right. So Ammon taught King Lamoni the gospel of Jesus Christ through a series of miracles. The king, the queen, and a lot of their people believed and they were baptized. Okay. Now, event number seven. King Lamoni and Ammon then traveled to save Ammon's brothers from prison. Along the way, they met King Lamoni's father, who was king of all the land, and he was angry to see his son with a Nephite. However, the king was impressed when he realized Ammon's main concern was for the king's son. And so the king allowed them to continue their journey and helped them to release his brothers from prison. Event number eight, back in time, even further back. Uh, so Ammon, Aaron, Mulekai, and Amma have just separated, and they were preaching in a bunch of cities, but Aaron, Mulekai, and Amma were rejected. Okay, so can you draw rejected missionaries? And the Lamanites put Aaron and his companions in prison. And when Ammon and King Lamoni freed them, they all continued on their missionary journeys together and they started having a lot more success. Okay, last one, can you do it? Okay, yes. How much time? Time is up. You have to draw this faster than you've ever drawn anything. Okay, okay. So Aaron traveled to the land of Nephi to the king's palace and started teaching him the gospel. Okay, now you have to stay with me and that's what's happening and come follow me this week. And that's, that's what's, what's happening and come, come follow me this, this week. week. Okay, now the most important part, do we have 30 more seconds? Yeah. I need both of you to vote. If we were like having a yearbook contest and you had to vote on me, whether I would be class clown or most popular, what would you vote? Most popular. Most popular. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer, but thank you guys. I, I'm trying to get voted most popular girl on campus today. So thanks for making my dreams happen. 
Hey, my name is Kristen. What's yours? My name's Rachel. Rachel. Oh, that's like my best friend from college is a name. That's exciting. Okay, Rachel has five minutes or less, guys. So let's talk about the scriptures. Okay, so we are going to actually turn to the scriptures. You have a phone with the okay. scriptures? Okay, awesome. Turn to Alma 17. Odd. And we are going to read verses two through three. And as we're reading this, everyone, I want you to pause and turn to Alma 17 verses two through three. And we are going to be looking for the three simple things that these guys did to become spiritual rock stars. Okay. And now the sons of my Mosiah were with Alma at the time the angel first appeared unto him. Therefore, Alma did rejoice exceedingly uh, to see his brethren and what what added more to his joy, uh, they were still his brethren in the Lord, yea, they had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth, for they were men of a sound understanding, and they had searched the scriptures diligently that they might know the word of God. But this is not all. They had been given themselves to much prayer and fasting. Therefore, they had the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation. And when they had taught, they had taught the, with the power and authority of God. Okay, awesome. I love that. So the three things they did. Do you want to cheat and look at my sheet? What'd they do, Rachel? <laughs> they searched the scriptures diligently. They prayed and they fasted. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. Now run to class. Everyone comment below. Rachel, run to class. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, I forgot the most important part. Yes. If this was high school and you had to vote for the yearbook, would you vote me most popular or class clown? It's a little mm. thing I'm doing. Probably class clown. Okay, all right, vote for class clown. Make you, Rachel, run to class. Okay, so Rachel had to run, but we do need to still ponder and discuss on this. So the thing I would love for you to ponder and discuss is when have the scriptures or prayer or fasting given you strength? Hey, do you want to talk to me about the scriptures? Are you going to class? Go to class, go, go. Getting rejected is fun. I feel like I'm on a mission. Anyone want to be my friend? Anyone? What time is it? Why is everyone going to class? They should be talking to me. Are you on your way to class? Do you love Jesus? Okay, come talk to me. All right. Everyone's been rejecting me and it's been really awkward. Dang it. My name is Kristen. What's your name? I'm Annie. And I want you to think of, actually, I would love for your uh, insight on this. Can you think of a modern day example of someone who chose the right path and not the easy path? Well, you know, actually, I can. There's this, there's this Instagram influencer girl that I follow. She's my age, so she's about 19. And the easy path for her would have been to, she's been dating this guy for a long time. Yeah. It would have been to, um, or, you know, continue dating him, get married, whatever, um, continue with her business. She has a clothing um, business, but she um, announced she was going on a mission. So she's in Montana right now. So I don't, I mean, for, for somebody who has grown up on YouTube and Instagram, yeah. that's not an easy decision no. to make to just put her entire life on hold her business is now yeah. in the hands of like her parents and stuff put that all on hold for a year and a half to serve the lord so okay that is super cool i love that i love it <laughs> who is she so everyone can follow her uh kelsey jade kelsey, kelsey. kelsey. oh kelsey jade you all probably know her i don't know her but go follow her that's awesome i love that i love that okay so we're gonna be talking today about someone who similarly did what was hard instead of what was easy and we're gonna do that in alma chapter 17 verses 24 through 25 so everyone pause and turn to that that's gonna be our scripture of the day would you be willing to read that it's right here 17 24 through 25 and as we're doing this we're gonna look for what two paths lay ahead of ammon what were his two options Right. If you have it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it came to pass that King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon and caused that his bands should be loosed, and he would <laughs> he would that Ammon would take one of his daughters to wife. But Ammon said unto him, Nay, but I will be thy servant. Therefore Ammon became a servant to King Lamoni. And it came to pass that he was set among other servants to watch the flocks of Lamoni according to the custom of the Lamanites. Okay, so what were his two options? What were his two paths? <laughs> he could be a servant for the next little while of his life, or he could take a beautiful princess and <laughs> Her, oh, Brian. I know what decision I'd make. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it was a much better first thing than I. No, seriously, it's like I could be royalty or I could like clean up for sheep poop. You know, yeah. I have one of your options. I'd like yeah. killed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so here's what we're doing now. We are gonna ponder when have you taken the right path instead of the easy path, and was it worth it? Do you want to answer that question, or do you want to just leave it to them? You want to answer it? Ah, sure. So this isn't like this was a decision that it wasn't like it was 
uh, obviously right yeah. or obviously wrong. Yeah. But I had a really rough, so this is my second semester up here. I had a really rough first semester, and that was in fall. And I did not want to come back. I had a good job. I actually had two good jobs lined up. Yeah. I'm going on a mission in the fall, and so I was like, I'll just, I can just stay here and I can work. I can get money, I can go on a mission. But I was talking to my parents about it, and they were, they were a little bit more on the side that you should come back. Yeah, you should go back to, to school. You should get a good experience before leaving yeah. us for a year and a half. And I was like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> and, I'm so, <laughs> and so I was like, no, I don't think I will. And my boss was pressuring me to have a for sure answer. And so I was like, okay, I don't think I'm going to go back up to school. I was praying about it. I um, had recently gone to the temple and received my endowments. So I was going to the temple a lot and trying to figure out. And I got a very distinct answer of go back. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. So here I am. <laughs> but it's been the best, like, two, three months of my life. Oh. Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's been, it's completely switched my mindset on a mission and on, um, being away from family and stuff yes. like that. So it wasn't like an obviously right choice, but I definitely didn't take the easy route, which would have been right. stay where my good job was. <laughs> right, I didn't make a lot of money. Well, and I love that because it's two good choices, right? Yeah. One wasn't yeah. like evil. And that was what Ammon faced, right? He's like, okay, yeah, I can do good, one of good. two good things. But yeah. I love that, Annie. Okay, everyone in the comments below, say, Annie, good luck on your mission. <laughs> And guess where she's gonna go? I would actually love to see that in the comments. Yeah, guess where Annie's gonna go? All right, now Annie, the second most important part of this, would you vote me most popular or class clown? Think seriously, like really ponder on this. This is a life-changing decision. <laughs> no pressure. Um, well, there, okay, I would guess both for different reasons though. But one is stronger than the other, which one? You, one of two good choices, Annie. Which do you do? <laughs> okay, I would, I would personally say class clown because I'm a class cl clown. We've got similar energy. Okay, so I think I got voted class clown in middle school and high school, so you're not wrong. My my goal today is to get voted most popular, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Annie. Good luck on your mission. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we've got our first male. Yeah, you are. You're our first man of the day. I'm super excited you're here. My name is Kristen. What is your name? I'm William. William, what are you studying? Political science. Oh, political science. That's what my husband studied. What do you want to do with it? I want to work in, um, I want to work in American government. Doing what? Uh, right now, I want to work at the U.S. Capitol. Okay. I have uh, three internships, uh, three, uh, three applications oh, ooh. out. Hopefully, I get a response. Okay. So. Have you ever been to D.C.? I have. I'm from yeah. Pennsylvania. So. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. You get the whole political scene. Okay. Awesome. Good. Do you know I, am more, too? I, I am the political <laughs> scene. <laughs> Such confidence. <laughs> okay. William is going to talk to us about Ammon, who is like the grittiest, coolest guy in the Book of Mormon. And we're going to talk about what gave him that grit to do hard things. So, everyone pause we are going to turn to our scripture of the day and if you would too William we're going to be in Alma chapter 17 verses 26 through 29 and as William's looking that up go ahead and pause and turn to that we are going to be looking for what do you think the difference was between Ammon and the other shepherds who were just scared and crying instead of doing something active to save themselves all right and after he had been in the service of the king three days as he was with the um Oh, how do you say that? Where is it? Lamanitis. Lamanitis. <laughs> That's not a word. Going forth about. the flocks to the place of water, which was called the water of Sebus, and all the Lamanites drive their flocks hither, that they might have the have water. Therefore, as Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to the place of water, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites who had been with the, their flocks to water stood and scattered the, the flocks of Ammon and the servants of the king, and they scattered them insomuch that they fled many ways. Now the servants of the king began to murmur, saying, Now the king will slay us, as he had our brethren, because their flocks were scattered by the wickedness of these men. And they began to weep exceedingly, saying, Behold, our flocks are scattered already. Okay, so what was the first response of the servants? when? Anger. It was anger, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you remember from the story, what does Ammon do? Like, hey, and, and the longer they might disagree with these people, he was kind of like, well, like the best thing is to serve them. Yes. Yes. I love it. And so the servants that were all murmuring and they're like, rah, 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 they're just kind of like gave in and thought life is hard no, me... and it's not fair, right? But Ammon was more like, 
I'm going to go out and do something about it. Life right. might be hard, but I'll do something. Right. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay, so let's actually ponder and discuss. I have a question. Are you ready for this? Uh, Deep, thought-filled question. When has a problem, like Adam faced, where, oh my gosh, like we might get killed if we don't do something about this. When has a problem for you turned into an opportunity? I think, yeah, schools, I mean, school can be an issue sometimes, but mm -hmm. the, uh, the opportunity cost is second to none, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're putting time and you know, you're kind of running into a lot of issues, you know, what's finances, grades or whatever, but at the end of the day, you know if you work hard, it's gonna turn out okay. Perfect. Rely on Christ. Yes, yeah. oh, I love that. Okay, so the problem of all the things you have to do to get through school and to do well in school, it actually becomes an opportunity to learn and grow and become better, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. Absolutely. Last thing I need from you, not quite as important, but it is important. Would you, if we were in high school, vote me most popular or class clown? This is affecting my life. This, this is important, isn't it? This is, this is this is important. What do you vote? I think I go with class clown. Okay, we got another vote for class clown. Thank you, William. Absolutely. All right, have a great day. You as well. My name is Kristen. What is your name? I'm Tyler. Tyler. Okay, Tyler is a newlywed. Congrats to Tyler and I'm Megan. Tyler and Megan. Everyone in the comments below say congrats, Tyler and Megan. Okay, do you want to come be in this too? Where did it? You'll be our first married couple in the whole video. We're doing come follow me together. Congrats on the wedding. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so we are going to be reading Alma 21 verses 10 through 16. If you could open up to that, and would you both be willing to read for huh? us? Okay, so we're actually going to. We've been discussing Ammon, but we're actually now going to be reading about his brother Aaron, who also has a ton of grit. And it came to pass, as he began to expound these things unto them, they were angry with him, and began to mock him, and they would not hear the words which he spake. Therefore, when he saw that they would not hear his words, he departed out of their synagogues, and came over to the village which was called Anientai, and there he found Mulekai preaching the word unto them and also Amonha and his brethren, and they were contending with many, with many about the word. And it came to pass that they saw that the people would harden their hearts. Therefore they departed and came over into the land of Madonai, and they did preach the word unto many, and few believed on the words which they taught. Nevertheless, Aaron and a certain number of his brethren were taken and cast into prison, and the remainder of them fled out of the land of Madonai unto the regions round about. And those who were cast into prison suffered many things, and they were delivered by the hand of Lamoni and Ammon, and they were fed and clothed, and they went forth again to de declare the word, and thus they were delivered for the first time out of prison and thus they had suffered. And they went forth whithersoever they were led by the Spirit of the Lord, preaching the word of God in every synagogue of the Amalekites or in every assembly of the Lamanites where they could be admitted. Okay, I love that. And I noticed that you got a missionary tag on the Friday Scriptures yep. that you served a mission. Yes. Okay, so tell me this. I'm actually really curious. Do you think that your fellow companions, obviously not you, but your fellow companions, if they got like thrown into prison or rejected and like literally had people trying to kill them, would they just keep going out and teaching because they love it so much or would they need a little push to help them keep going out? I think some of my companions would continue to go out, but I think some of them would, would need a little bit more push. That was a very good, <laughs> nice answer. Okay. No, but I love that because I think like if you if you look at that, they just kept getting rejected over and over, right? And they just kept going out and teaching. And it says, what were they led by? I think it says they were led by the spirit. Not not a mission president, not a fellow companion who's like, we gotta go, right? Yeah. So what how do you think that relates to us? Like how can we be more like that and not have to be compelled in all things? What do you guys think? I feel like it comes down to like your desires. Um, on my mission, we talked a lot about, there's this talk called the fourth missionary. And it's basically the difference between like someone who's obedient and someone who's obedient because they want to be. Okay. And so a lot of times in our lives, like we're obedient, we do the things that we're supposed to do, but like we don't really want to. Right. And we don't really receive the blessings from that obedience if we're not dedicated like in our hearts. So I feel like these missionaries, they were like doing it not just because they had to, but because they really wanted to. Yeah, I think that's the difference in our lives. I think kind of like adding to that, um, it talks like later, like when they meet back up with Alma, that mm -hmm. they had like fasted and prayed much and they knew the scriptures, they had studied, they took the time, like, like my wife was talking about, they took the time to do those little things. Yeah. And so in that sense, then they were open to listening to the Spirit so that when they, they recognized the voice of the Spirit so that they could follow it and do whatever it needed them to do. Okay, I love that. Oh, I love return missionaries. Okay, so here's a question though, because hopefully families are watching this together and there's gonna be some teenagers who might feel like they're in a compelled in all things slump, or maybe even some of us moms. What would you suggest for someone if they're in a compelled in all things slump? If they're like, I don't have a desire. Like, I really don't wanna to go to church. I don't wanna share the gospel. How do you get 
out of that? I think there's value in being obedient even like when you don't have the desire yeah. because at least you're trying. Um, and I think the Lord recognizes our efforts a lot more um, than we necessarily give ourselves credit for. And then eventually, as we keep being obedient and trying to have a desire, I think eventually the Lord will grant that to us. And at first, it's like hard. And sometimes you're going to wake up and be like, I don't want to go to church today, but I'm going to go because I love God. And I'm going to try. Yes. And eventually, hopefully, we get to that point where we're not feeling compelled in all things. Okay. I don't love like that. It's all or nothing. Yeah. Like just be obedient and being obedient is good no matter what. And the desire can come. I love that. I love that. I'm like looking at my son off of the corner. <laughs> so I love that. Everyone wish the packs the best of luck in the comments below and give them some good advice. They are coming up on their first anniversary. How should they celebrate on a student budget? I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. How should they celebrate on a student budget? Let the packs know in the comments. Okay. One last thing. This is super important. I'm trying to get voted one of these today, either most popular or class clown. You can't know which one I'm hoping for, but there's one of them I'm really hoping to get voted. Would you vote me class clown or most popular? This matters a lot. <laughs> this matters to my posterity. Your posterity. My, right there, there's my posterity. He's gonna cry if you don't vote right. Yeah, sure. I would say most popular. Okay. I think I would go with that too. You guys, it's <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. That was awesome. All right. I forgot to record it earlier, but the most important news of the day is, guys, I got voted most popular person on campus at BYU-Idaho today, thus fulfilling my high school dreams of not being class clown, but being most popular. I am the cool kid at school.